Our Supreme Court Justice is Roger B. Taney. Roger B. Taney was born on March 17, 1777 in Calvert, Maryland. His parents were Michael Taney, a planter and a politician, and Monica Brooke. As a young man, Roger Taney attended village schools and also explored the classics with a private tutor. At the age of 15, he attended and graduated from Dickinson College in Pennsylvania in 1795. He then studied law with Judge Jeremiah Chase of the Maryland General Court. He was admitted to the bar in 1799 at Annapolis and served one year in the Maryland House of Delicates. In 1806, he married Anne Key. Roger B. Taney was a member of the conservative property conscious Federalist Party until 1812. He returned to the Maryland House of Delegates in 1816 when as a political maverick he was elected to the state senate. Juries were impressed with his work in the courtroom and in 1827 he was appointed attorney general in Maryland. Taney aligned himself with Andrew Jackson, the leader of the Democratic Party, and he later got elected president in 1828. He then reorganized his cabinet in 1831 and appointed Taney attorney general. In 1833, President Jackson appointed him Secretary of Treasury. Opposition to Roger B. Taney and his financial program was so strong that the Senate rejected him in June, which marked the first time the Congress has refused to confirm a presidential nominee for a cabinet post. He returned to Baltimore to rebuild his law practice, and a year later, Andrew Jackson nominated him to Supreme Court Justice of the United States as an Associate Justice. Taney's enemies stalled the nomination indefinitely. On July 6, 1835, Chief Justice John Marshall died and Roger B. Taney was nominated to fill his place on the bench. One of Taney's cases was the Supreme Court case regarding the Warren Bridge and Charles River Bridge of Boston that settled a dispute over a clause in the Constitution that discussed the regarding obligation of a contract. The court sided ultimately with the Second Bridge Company in a 5-2 decision. Roger B. Taney's most famous case was a Supreme Court case known as the Dred Scott decision, where the ruling by the court said that individuals of African descent that were brought into the United States and kept as slaves were not protected by the United States Constitution and would never be considered U.S. citizens. On March 15, 1857, Taney delivered a pro-slavery decision in the Dred Scott v. Stanford case that ruled against Scott in a 7-2 decision declaring that African Americans were not United States citizens and thusly had no right to sue. Our Supreme Court case is Whitney v. California. Charlotte Anita Whitney was convicted of being a member of the Communist Labor Party of California. She violated the California Criminal Syndicalism Act. She was charged because she was participating and assisting in the Communist Labor Party. When he challenged her conviction on the grounds that the CCSA violated her freedom of speech under the First and Fourteenth Amendment, the court argued that freedom of speech guaranteed by the First Amendment was not an absolute right. The California Criminal Syndicalism Act that Whitney violated was any doctrine or precept advocating teaching or aiding and abetting the commission of crime, sabotage or unlawful acts of force and violence or unlawful methods of terrorism as means of accomplishing a change in the government or political change. The court argued that a state may punish those who abuse this freedom by utterances, tending to endanger the foundations of organized government and threaten its overthrow by unlawful means. The case happened in California in 1919, but didn't go to the Supreme Court until 1926 to 1927. William Howard Taft was the Chief Justice on Whitney's case. He became Chief Justice in 1921 until 1930. He was the first person to be a President and Chief Justice. He made the decision that Whitney was guilty. The decision made by the Supreme Court upheld the conviction and Charlotte Anita Whitney was found guilty. Years after the case in 1969, Louis D. Brandeis's opinion that stated his disagreement with the ruling. This restriction may only be invoked when there is a clear and imminent danger or an absolute evil involved. 
got the court to explicitly overrule the decision on Whitney's case, finding her not guilty.